Okay, so many, so many visitors today. So let's go into our mountain pose, do a little warm up. Jessica here is incapacitated, so she will do what she can. And if she can't, she'll just modify. So feet hip width apart, toes straight ahead, sitting bones down, hips nice and open, get that core activated. Ribs toward your spine and up, and shoulders back and down. And stretch the crown to the ceiling. Take a moment to breathe. Exhale any tension. So, lengthen up through the crown and inhale, arms to shoulder level. Stretch your fingertips out. Exhale, hands to your heart. Stretch out to the front, shoulders stay down. And then clasp your hands behind you. Press them to the floor and lift your heart. Spread your toes and pivot over. Exhale all the way down and then lift your sitting bones. Straighten your legs. Move your chin jaw around. Get your neck releasing a little bit. Hands toward your hip. And then bend your knees slightly. Start at the bottom of your spine. Wind your way all the way up and lift your heart. Stretch as much as you will and lengthening through the whole body. Inhale upright, release your arms, and take a moment again just focusing on your reaction. Inhale, hands to shoulder level. Exhale to your heart, stretch to the front, and clasp your hands again the opposite way behind you. Press them down and lift your heart, and then pivot forward. And as deeply as appropriate for you today, don't go too far. And relax, sitting bones up, and hands toward your head. And again, with the chin slightly in, start winding back from the bottom of your spine to the top, and lift into the upper body back bend. Just stretch through your whole spine, breathing. And inhale upright, release your arms. Feel that spine a little more activated. Side stretches, so bring one arm down and the other arm out, palm toward the ceiling and over your shoulder. Stretch as you lean to the side, no twist, and just go as deeply as that feels good for your body, pushing the foot down and your hand away. Feel those ribs stretch apart. Inhale back up. Release that arm, and we'll do the other side. Arm out, palm toward the ceiling, and over your shoulder. Push them away and slide to the side. And again, just as much or as little as your body needs for that rib opening on that side. Don't lean forward. And then inhale up, release that arm. And again, just feel those ribs a little bit more stretched, lateral motion. Next is our twist. So remember, really keep those base of the skull, base of the spine area stretching up here. Arms out, palms toward the ceiling, hands over your shoulders, clasp your elbows, spread your toes, stretch the spine, exhale and turn for your twist. Take a breath and pivot over. Go as deeply as appropriate for your body today. Keep the weight on both feet and relax. And then from the bottom of the spine, again, keeping the weight on both feet and the twist, come on up and lift your heart into a little upper body back bend, but remember, don't overdo your low back. Take a moment and breathe. Inhale up, exhale around to the center and switch your arms. And again, stretch the spine, turn to the other side. Take a breath. And pivot on over as deeply as appropriate for your body. And again, just lift your sitting bones a little bit. Relax the upper body. Stretch out through your head and elbows. And work your way back from the bottom of the spine all the way up. Heart high and shoulders down, coming in again to that upper body back. Take a breath for two. And then come on upright, exhale around to the center. Extended mountain with those fingertips toward the ceiling, pull the shoulders, shoulder blades, and sitting bones down toward the floor. Stretch it out, pivot forward, parallel to the floor. 
And if you can go into that forward bend, just deepen as much as you like, hands to the floor in ragdoll. Pull in deeper if you like that stretch on your back. And then arms to the front, and again, winding back into mountain pose. Take a moment there, feel your body, and just notice how that spine is more activated. So let's step wide. So toes start facing the front and have your feet as wide apart as you feel is appropriate for you today. You can angle your toes in slightly if you need to, to make sure you're not sliding apart. So we're gonna do a pyramid first. So we're gonna turn the feet first. Turn your one foot all the way to the side, and then heel back, toes forward on that back foot, and turn your whole body, pulling that back hip forward and the front hip back so you're facing that front foot. Either cross your arms across your low back or bring your fingertips up between your shoulder blades into reverse prayer. Keep your body straight, and we're going to go parallel to the floor-ish. So push your sitting bones back evenly, pivot at your hips, and bring your chest toward that front foot. And you don't want to go too deep, so just stay parallel to the floor, or a little bit less, if that's appropriate for your body today. Spread the toes, get the weight even into both feet, and just stretch through the whole spine, lengthening through the back of the neck, through the whole spine, as you just keep that body stretched apart. Take a breath, exhale. If you want to go a little deeper pivoting, you can do that. Feel the stretch on the back, especially of that front leg, but also the back leg. So really lift up through those sitting bones. And then pivoting back up, bring your body back upright, release your arms, and turn your feet back to the center. Take a moment, feeling your body a little bit more activated through the legs, through the spine. And of course, we're going to balance and go the other way. So turn your foot all the way to the side, heel back, toes forward, pulling the whole body over to the other side. So the hips are even, facing the side, both legs straight. And again, either clasp the arms at your low back, keeping it nice and supported, or the fingertips up between your shoulder blades. Pivot at the hip bones and pull those sitting bones back. Keep everything parallel to the floor as you come down, leading with your chest. Stretch the head and sitting bones away from each other. Straighten those legs and make sure that both of them are evenly supporting you. So get into that little toe back foot side as much as the front foot. Spread those toes, no gripping. Keep that chest open, both shoulders facing the floor evenly. Stretch it out long. Take a moment as you exhale, maybe pivot a little deeper if that works for you. That increases the stretch on the backs of your legs and those hamstrings, so don't overdo. Make sure the ball of the foot all the way across from the big toe to the little toe, as well as the heel supports you evenly on both feet. And then again, pivoting back up, coming all the way to the top, release your arms, and turn your feet back to the front. Take a moment and breathe. Exhale any tension. Okay, we're going to start with another pyramid, and then we're going to go into warrior one, which also that fully pivoted position with your hips. So take a moment to breathe. Think evenly into your feet and turn them. So 90 degrees on that first foot. Heel back, toes forward. Pulling the whole body to face that first foot that you turn. So the hips are even. We're again going to either cross the arms or reverse prayer as you come forward pivoting. Take a moment there, just coming parallel to the floor or less. Spread your toes, get both feet supporting you evenly. Take a moment and breathe. Tuck the chin a little bit, so make sure you're stretching the back of your neck as well. 
Take a breath, stretch it out. And then as you spread your toes and get evenly into your feet, we're gonna modify slightly by bending that front knee right above the ankle. So make sure it's not falling in or out. And then pivot your whole body all the way upright so that your head is up toward the ceiling. Remember, both hips are facing the side, so keep pulling forward on that back hip and back on that forward hip. And then you can either leave your hands where they are and lift your heart slightly and look up, or you can release your arms out to the side, palms up, and clasp your hands overhead and pull them back a little bit more, coming into that upper body back bend in your warrior one. So keep the back hip coming forward, the front hip going back. Keep your weight into both feet evenly and stretch the whole spine out through the crown. Relax your shoulders toward your waist and don't forget to breathe, lifting your heart. So warrior builds heat, so it's feel a little bit warmer perhaps. And then as you exhale, bring your hands to your heart and straighten your front knee and turn to the front back into your starting position. Take a moment and breathe, feeling that support through both feet evenly up, through your legs, through your torso, through the crown. Relax the shoulders down, and we'll do the same to the other side. So foot to the side, 90 degrees, heel back, toes forward, pivoting all the way around to face the first foot. Clasp your hands at your low back or behind your back and pivot at your hips. Pull that front hip back and the back hip forward as you go, making sure those shoulders are parallel as you come toward the floor. And again, parallel to the floor-ish. Stretch your head forward, make sure that neck is stretching so that chin may come a little bit closer toward your chest if necessary to make sure that you're not crunching that neck. Take a moment there, breathing giving your weight into both feet evenly. Make sure the whole foot on both feet is supporting you, but not the toes. Make sure they're spreading apart. And then again, we're going to bend that front knee right above the ankle, coming up with your body, clam toward the ceiling, pivoting into warrior one, keeping your hands either where they are, lifting your heart slightly, and stretching your head back. Keep the neck stretching open. Sink evenly into both feet. Keep that back hip forward and the front one back. Or again, you can bring the arms out to the side, palms up, clasp your hands overhead, and lift your heart maybe a little bit higher. Take a breath. Sink evenly into both feet. Make sure that knee isn't caving in or out. And don't forget to breathe. Stretch it out, relax your shoulders, keep stretching through the neck and lifting your heart. Take a moment to breathe, and then if your hands are up, bring them down, releasing your arms, straighten your knee, and turn back to the center. And let's step into mountain pose. As you get back into mountain pose, feel your body a little bit more activated through that whole core as well as your spine. Hands to your heart. Inhale, bring them toward the ceiling, and then thumbs back behind you, a nice upper body back bend. We're going to swan dive forward, pause it parallel to the floor. Stay there if you can't invert. Otherwise, drop down into ragdoll and pull your hands behind your legs for a little deep stretch on the back of your body after our little back bend. And then release hands to the front and wind your way back up. As you get back into mountain pose, just take a moment, feel your body, and sink evenly into your feet. Stretch your crown, and let's turn the toes out. Bend your knees toward, but not beyond your toes, hands above your knees, and we'll do a little twist. So stretch the sitting bones and crown away from each other. And turn to the side, bringing your shoulder down toward the opposite knee as you turn into that twist. So the hip comes up on the side you're turning towards slightly, 
your ribs and your shoulders and everything turns toward that side. Deepen as much or as little as your body wants and needs. Make sure those knees don't go beyond your toes. Stretch it out and exhale, turn back to the center. And again, lengthening through the spine to twist. Exhale and turn to the opposite side, bringing the shoulder down further toward that opposite knee as the hip goes slightly up and the hips, ribs, and shoulder turn to face the side. Take a breath. Make sure you're not pressing into those hands. They're just positioning. Make sure those knees aren't going out or in or beyond your toes. Stretch it out. And exhale, turn back to the center, tuck in your chin, and wind your way back up, toes to the front, into mountain pose. Feel your spine even more activated, and don't forget to breathe. Now let's do a little pelvic tilting. So we're going to again turn those toes out to the sides, knees toward, not beyond your toes, hands above your knees, Again, no pressure in those hands, just position. Shoulders right above your toes, spine starts straight, and then drop into the back bend. Sitting bones go back and up, ribs down, chest forward, looking to the front. Keep stretching through the back of your neck, and tuck the sitting bones down and forward as you pull the ribs in and look down between your feet. So just a nice pelvic rotation, pushing the sitting bones way back and the chest forward as you drop those ribs down into the back bend and then exhaling to the forward bend, really pulling in the ribs, getting those core muscles activated as your shoulders stay right above your toes. And just a few times at your own breath pace, breathing into the back bend, exhaling into the forward bend, and working your whole spine and pelvis even a little bit more. And then the next time you're forward, just pause and inhale, coming back up again into mountain pose. Take a moment as you get there, just feel your spine and your body, hands to your heart, and inhale toward the ceiling, a little back bend with those thumbs behind you and that chest lifting. And swan dive forward, pivot over. And we're coming all the way down. Hands on your shins under your knees for that halfway up stretch, spreading your toes, stretching your spine, and then bending your knees, come all the way to the floor into child pose as our transition. Forehead toward the floor, unless, of course, you can't invert, in which case you want to make sure that you're doing what's right for your body. And then inhale and sit up on your heels, coming over into step position. Feet out to the front, press out through your heels, toes pulling back, shoulders right above your hips, activate that core to support your spine as always. Take a moment. Think about the kneecaps coming toward your thighs, letting the whole back of your legs stretch along those hamstrings, pushing out through your heels. Make sure those sitting bones are slightly behind you and stretch up through the groin. We're gonna work the outside of the hip a little bit, so bring your foot to the upper thigh and let the knee come down toward the floor. You can add weight with your hands, but remember, no pressure. We don't want to overstretch and strain. We just want to relax and allow things to open a little bit more. If that's tight today, remember you can bring that front leg over to the side, which opens it a little bit more easily across your hips and pelvis. Take a moment and breathe, just letting that knee do what it wants to, going toward the floor as much or little as it needs to today. Remember, personal practice, what's right for your body only, letting the knee do as much or as little as it will. And then foot and knee into your hands or pull the arms around the leg and move side to side. We're getting that outside of your hip joint lubricated. So take a moment and breathe. 
If you love it and you want a little more intensity in that move, you can bring your foot higher or closer. Don't do that if you've already feeling that that's enough for you. And then on an exhalation, release that leg and feel the difference because that's your yoga is noticing what's internally going on for you. Core activated, stretch the spine apart, and we're going to, of course, balance and do the other side. So bring that opposite foot up and let the knee come down again. Hands on your leg if you want to add weight, but not pressure. Bring this leg over to the side if that's going to be more effective. But remember, the knee and toes stay up and the heel pushes at whatever position it's in. Just relax. Remember, incrementalism is what we're doing. We're just letting things relax. If it feels tight, back off a little bit. When you back off, it gets easier. Just relax even more. Maybe that knee will come down even further if it wants to, but remember, never force it. We want to let the body do what it's willing to do, not make it do something that it resists, because then it's less effective. Take a breath, just relax, everything, letting it go. And again, when you're ready, bringing the foot and knee into your hands or pulling the leg in with your arms wrapped around, let that hip rotator get a little bit more work going. Take a moment and breathe. Stay there or go more intensely if you love it or not. Always personal practice for your body. Notice one side may be easier than the other. Just do what's right for this side this time. And again, on an exhalation, go ahead and release. Take a moment and breathe as you get back into your staff position starting point and bring the heels back toward your body, feet together, knees out to the side into butterfly. Hands under your toes, just pulling those heels in as much as they want to go. Knees coming down toward the floor, only as far as they want to go. And don't forget to breathe. Exhale any tension. Shoulders above your hips. Relax. Keep that core active, supporting your spine. And don't forget to breathe. And then bring your hands one at a time behind you, right under your shoulders, fingertips or palms down, whatever works for you. Lift your heart. As you exhale, maybe those knees will come further toward the floor. Let it happen, but don't force it. Bottoms of the feet can go up toward the ceiling. That somehow aligns things in the knees and hips even better for that opening, if you love it. Take a moment and breathe. Relax the shoulders down. And don't forget to release any tension. And then releasing your hands back to the center. Slide the feet out a little bit. Lift your knees and bring the legs back out to the front. As you get back into staff position, just take a moment, letting those heels stretch out. And we're going to come up onto our hands and knees. So table position, knees under your hips, pad if you need to, wrists, elbows, and shoulders lined up. You can go ahead and fold your mat and get a little less bend in your wrists if you need to. And you can pick up your wrists anytime you need to as you do that. We're going to go into our pigeon pose. So as we do that, we're going to slide the right knee between the hands and the left leg back, opening that hip flexor on the back leg, letting the hips slide down toward the floor. Take the right knee way over to the side of your mat and bring the heel up toward the front, coming as much as parallel to the floor with that shin if that works for you, and let those hips just drop to the floor. So very similar to the warrior one that we were doing when we were standing, letting those hips drop and open both to the front. Shoulders even to the front, chest forward and crown high, a little back bend in that back of your body. Take a moment to breathe, exhaling any tension. If that's feeling tight for you, you can remember, slide your forearms to the floor with the elbows and hands down. Chest still forward, letting those hips sink evenly down toward the floor. 
Take a moment to breathe, chest forward, crown high. Remember, you're stretching the back of your neck, not crunching it. And you can stay there with the arms down. You can be a little more intensely in the back bend with your hands under your shoulders and that chest moving to the front and up. Keep stretching as much as you like. Exhale, any tension, let those hips sink evenly down toward the floor. And then if you're still on your forearms, come on back with the hands under your shoulders, chest forward, stretching, shoulder blades toward your waist, everything opening, letting those hips relax. So we're working both the outside of this right hip and the front of that left hip. And then pressing into your hands, slide the front knee up, back and the back knee up, coming back in the table position with your spine nice and straight. Stretch it out and go ahead, push back, letting those hips release, forehead toward the floor if you like, coming into your extended child pose. And then again, coming, pivoting back up into your hands and knees, mountain pose, no, table pose. <laughs> Get that core active, supporting your low back and stretch your spine. We're sliding the left knee forward and the right leg back this time, opening that hip flexor on the right leg. Keep the hip bones facing the floor. Take your left knee way over to the left side of the mat. Pull that heel forward as much as it wants to go and sink those hips straight down to the floor. Stay there with the chest forward and the crown high and the back of your neck stretching out. Exhaling and relaxing those hips down as far as they want to go. Or again, slide those hands forward, bring the elbows down under your shoulders and get a little bit less strain and stress through those hips and pelvic areas as you relax those hips down toward the floor. Keep the hip bones as even as you can, the chest as well, even as you can. Coming into that back bend as much as you'd like with the chest forward and the crown high, whichever position you're in with your arms. Take a moment. Exhale, letting those hips come down. As things get easier, you can keep adjusting things. Knee further to the side, foot further toward the front on that bent knee leg working that hip rotator on the outside of that hip, or stretching that leg back behind you with that hip flexor on the front of your leg, getting a nice stretch this time. So we worked the legs in all directions today. If your arms are still on the floor, come on back up to your hands under your shoulders, your chest forward, your crown high, in that upper body back bend, and then pressing into your hands a little bit more, Slide the front knee back and the back knee up, coming again into table position, and then sliding back, hands forward, hips down into your extended child. Take a moment to breathe, and then inhale and sit up, bring the legs to the front of the mat into staff position. Take a moment to breathe, feeling that core activated, and then exhale and slowly roll to the mat. And as you get all the way down, just take a moment to breathe and relax, shoulders down, a little reclined integration, toes toward each other, and then just relax. Take a moment and breathe, exhaling any tension, and we'll do a twist. So bring your arms to T position, palms up, and let's sitting bones toward the heels, press your back gently down, bring your right leg up to the ceiling, either bending it or keeping it straight, extended all the way toward the ceiling, flexing your heel, pulling your toes toward you. We're rolling all the way to the left side, foot to the floor, hands together, keep your head down as you go, making sure you don't overwork your neck. Hold the foot with your left hand if that works for you. Knee as straight as you can, giving a stretch on the back of that leg, or just hold the leg wherever it works for you. Bring the right hand above your shoulder to the ceiling, 
and lower it right at shoulder level behind you toward the floor as you look at it for your neck area twist. And the hand will come toward the floor for your middle back twist as much as your body wants to go. Remember, don't force it. It may never make it to the floor. That's okay. So push your foot away from you, stretching the back of the leg again, if that works for you on this twist today. And don't forget to breathe for that low back twist, exhaling <clears throat> any tension. Hand coming toward the floor. If it's up in the air, just let gravity do the work. You never have to force into your twist, always. Just exhale, relax, and gravity will bring you into your deepest position when it's ready. Just relaxing, breathing, exhaling and releasing tension. Then for now, just release your foot, roll onto your back, and flex the heel, keeping that core activated as it slowly lower the foot to the mat. And as it gets all the way down, just take a moment to release and relax, straighten things out if you need to, so we can twist to the other side. Again, exhale, sitting bones toward your heels back, just gently down, either straight leg or bent knee, bring the foot up toward the ceiling as far as it wants to go, press it out through the heel. Turn to the side, rolling all the way, keeping your head on the floor, feet together, no, hands together, and foot to the floor. If you can reach your foot with your right hand, hold it, otherwise hold the leg. Bring your What's that? Left hand hand to the ceiling, stretching it right above your shoulder, and lower the back of your hand behind you toward the floor as you look at it. So remember, the hand goes straight back, not up toward your head or down toward your foot, but straight behind you, opening the chest and heart. Let the hand go as far toward the floor as it wants, and then relax. So the more you hold the foot and straighten the front leg, the more that lower back gets into the twist. Be gentle if you need to. Turn your head for that neck area twist, looking at the hand behind you when it's ready. But don't go too far if you have neck issues. And just let gravity bring your hand toward the floor as that middle back is ready to go deeper into your twist. Always personal practice, just relaxing. Exhale any tension, deepen as much or as little as you want. And after a few more breaths, <clears throat> just allow your body to relax, letting go of your foot, rolling all the way onto your back. <clears throat> Press the back gently down, flex the heel, and again, use the core for support as you lower the leg slowly. When it gets all the way down, come into our corpse position relaxation for our final release today. Toes toward each other, and then relax your legs. Lots of work through those hips today, just let everything release and relax. Hands, palms up, letting the shoulders sink, and the whole upper body release. Soften your belly. Exhale, head turning side to side. Let the neck release. Coming into your final corpse position, relaxation. Exhale, deepen. Allow your body just to sink into that surface beneath you. <clears throat> Softening your body, letting it grow heavy, deepening into that earth support and let your body go completely. Now, as your body relaxes, just allow awareness of your body to release from your thoughts. As those thoughts release, know that other thoughts will come to your mind. Just let them go as well, allowing your thoughts to drift, floating away as easily as your breath. No need to remember the past or anticipate the future. No need to think about your body or anything else. Just let the thoughts drift, your mind to relax, your body to release. Everything deepen into that awareness 
of the peace within. Take a few moments and be peace. And of course, if you want to keep relaxing today, just take your journey. If it's time to activate for the rest of your day, just begin bringing energy and awareness with your breath back to the moment, to the room, to your body. And begin stretching and breathing and releasing however feels good for you today. And of course, as you breathe more deeply and stretch more completely, when you're ready for your final uh, yoga hug of appreciation, when you're sitting around toward your heels, back gently down, draw your heels toward your hips and your knees up toward your heart. Wrap your arms around, give yourself that appreciative yoga hug, and let your body know you appreciate its yoga work today and the work your body does for you every day. And when you're ready to release, Bring your head and feet to the floor, roll over to the side, and sit back up, getting ready for whatever's ahead for you today. Thanks for joining me.